want to change the topic and go back to something you said about industry fifteen years ago i was impressed with your books and i sort of felt that your philosophy was proper today however i'm more educated and i find that if a company this is what i don't answer well, wait a say, minute you haven't heard the question yet she well, was already estimated her position my, and my work incidentally displaying the quality of her brain if she says today she is more educated I am more educated what? now than I was 15 years ago when I was in high school then, before uh, I went to college the, I'm not interested in your biography let her, well, let her make context. her point let her make her point let her make her point it's, You're, very, it's very basic if a company is permitted to do what it wants to do like ITT you wind up with ITT in Nazi Germany doing whatever it damn well please and any other company in the United States doing the same thing conglomerates are not monopolies they can do whatever they want ITT owns everything from baking companies to telephone companies to munitions plants I mean I really think that's wrong and I really think that they Ms. start Rand is, Ms. Rand thinks it's wrong too but she's saying that it's not government force that's going to correct the problem I don't think government force is going to correct the problem either, but, right, but she's she saying that if we back away and just let this invisible hand uh, the work and competition and free enterprise happen according to its own inclinations, we're not going to have abuse, and, and abuse and evil will fall of its own weight. I don't believe that. And government force is going to correct the problem either, but, right, but she's she saying that if we back away and just let this invisible hand the, uh, the work and competition and free enterprise happen according to its own inclinations, we're not going to have abuse, and, and abuse and evil will fall of its own weight. I don't believe that. I can't believe it because money is power. And the more money you have, the more power you have. Can we encourage you to make a contribution to that observation? I will not answer anyone who is impolite, but to show you... <laughs> She wasn't impolite. I do not sanction impoliteness, and I am not the what? victim of hippies. But... Hippies? Th that's where it started. The, the, in what? the dropping of politeness and of manner. You're equating someone who disagrees with you with impoliteness. That's not uh, fair. No, no, no. Oh. If you didn't... If you didn't interrupt me, I would have demonstrated what I mean. I will to show you that I'm not evading the question. If anyone else wants to ask the same question politely, I'll be delighted to answer. Well, there was nothing impolite. You are punishing this woman for the vigor and energy that well, she brought you, to the dialogue. The people, and that's not fair to her. If she starts, this is the kind of woman we spend a long time trying to attract to our television audience. And now you are... Okay. Just I for the teach her some manners. Ms. I will now Ms. repeat Rand. what she said. Ms. Rand. She said, I used to agree with you, but now that I'm more educated, what does that mean? Well, that means she now has a different view. There's nothing personal about that observation. Don't be so sensitive. I am going to be. I intend to be. We're in New York City with Ayn Rand, and we'll be back in just a moment. But... I want to answer the preceding question. Doesn't anybody want to ask oh, it sure. politely? Yes. Uh, uh, your question... Your question asks this audience to agree with your assessment of the questioner, and I don't think they will. That's the problem. All of them? Yes. Uh, then why do they right, want to listen to me presume. at all? All right, does anybody, does anybody want to ask... The, Yes. Do you want to? All right. Hang on just a moment. Come around. Do you want to stand? I'm surprised that someone with the intelligence of Miss Rand can be so emotional in her approach. I can answer you. I didn't come here to be judged. I came here to answer questions. A question asked in the following form. I used to agree with you, but now that I'm more educated, I don't, is an insult which right. I cannot sanction. All right. I am not interested in the woman's history. She didn't have to begin it that way. Right. 
and that's what I want to register my protest. How do we against. keep? How do we keep? Hang on just a moment. How do we keep ITT from from developing too much power or any any multinational conglomerate in your in your world of? We don't give them government privileges. Uh, all monopolies, such as ITT, no. is sanctioned by government. It's the government that makes this field a monopoly and forbids the entrance of competitors. All the things that this lady cited as example, I had covered before by simply pointing out that the free market does not produce monopolies and never has in history. If you look at any monopoly, you'll see that it's held in power by an act of government, by government privilege. And what we have today is a mixed economy. It's not capitalism. Okay. Um, how do you think that a ITT and Xerox and General Motors won't overrun the world with their power? Do you believe that there is some powerful good, like 360 degrees, that always has to come back to good? No. What do you think is going to make them stop the, the monopolies or, or over the acquisition of more power. I have already made clear, A, I don't believe that they're evil. B, they don't have the power to run the world. Money is not power in the political sense. You cannot buy control. But it's power in the practical sense. I mean, if you have to pay $5 a gallon to get to, to, to work, a dollar and a half for a head of lettuce. Your children have to eat, they have to be educated. Our system has set it up that you can only get a good education if you're willing to pay for it. So you want us to be educated. Not necessarily. I would uh, support the early Americans who educated their own children. And some of the most successful men of the 19th century never went to college. And today, those who didn't go to college are more intelligent and better informed and less easily fooled than the people who did go to college. I assume you're against compulsory education. What? You're against compulsory education, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Uh, uh, no. You're against compulsory education, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Uh, uh, no, I'm against public funded education because that's the sure way to create a country of people disposed towards dictatorship and that's what you're seeing today. To begin with, nobody in a free society, now we're talking about the free market, yeah. in which the government doesn't interfere, nobody can become a monopolist. All monopolies are created by a special privilege for government. It's only by an act of government that you can keep competitors out of your field. Therefore, you couldn't become that kind of monopoly. The power you hold as an industrialist is not the power to use force. It's the power of producing something of value. That people want. And it's the people who literally con control you because every purchase is a vote in the favor of some businessmen and in a way against others. It's the public who decides what they want to buy and what they pass up. If, using your examples, you became this powerful tycoon economically, yes. but you can as an industrialist, it's not the power to use force. It's the power of producing something of value. That people want. And it's the people who literally con control you because every purchase is a vote in the favor of some businessmen and in a way against others. It's the public who decides what they want to buy and what they pass up. If Using your examples, you became this powerful tycoon economically, yes. but you cannot force anybody to deal with you, and you cannot force competitors out of your field, then every smaller man would be in that field because you would have established a price way above the market. You might last a month if that. So in other words, if I tried to be Mr. Big and charge outrageously high prices for, you for gasoline... Wrong. I would go broke, in your view, because in your leave them alone and let competition handle it approach to civilization, somebody with a smarter, with a better mousetrap, pardon my mixed metaphor. No, that's a very good one. All right. Would come along and undercut me. That's right. Sell at a cheaper price. But isn't just my view. You know what I'll do? I'll buy them up the minute I see this bird. I'll buy them. 
I'll own him and on Tuesday. And where will you get your money when you're I'm not allowed? I'm already holding them up for $2.50 a gallon. But they're not paying you. You say they're all going out they've of business. They've got to get to work. We're married to a petroleum uh, civilization. All right. no to... This has been done, you know. It isn't incidentally just my view. That is history. There are people who have tried to corner the market repeatedly, right. and the result was that they went broke. Let, let me see if I understand you now. How do you ex see if this has got it? You're saying, in effect, that the oil companies have this power because we gave it to them. We gave it to them with our large cars that need a lot of gasoline. We gave, them, we gave it to them with, with our wasteful practices of energy. We have such a tremendous demand and need and reliance on oil that we, in effect, have given the people who, make, who produce the oil the power over us. No. <laughs> tell me, tell me how, where that's wrong. Because the oil producers are not the only people whom we patronize and not the only people who supply a need. The, even if, which I say if, it never happens, but let's suppose one oil man cornered the market, he has competition from every other industry who produce other things which we need. Therefore, we cannot give all the power to one company even if in a given field we patronize only that company. That company is competing with every other producer. And the moment you charge too much and somebody can give us the same product mm -hmm. uh, at a lower price, he'll put you right. out of business. Okay. You realize, of course, that your critics suggest that you're just, that this is a pie in the sky, unpractical, notion that you're offering to us and that it sounds wonderful as you gather with the intellectuals at no. some university but it doesn't work out on the street quite the opposite it's in the universities that it doesn't work because all the leftist ideas and all the misrepresentation of capitalism come from leftist liberal professors the universities the universities are the real villains right. in the picture. Okay. All right. You want... Uh, but okay, I go ahead. must make go ahead. one slight postscript. I don't give a damn about my critics. You don't? Huh? No.